Uh, here's some of the things that I've learned about being a champion. Number one, very important, you and your team will never, never become champions. Imagine that. Now I've got your attention. Now that I have your attention, let me tell you what I mean by that. Nobody becomes champions. We just don't become champions. What you do is you decide you're going to be a champion, and then you follow the habits and the lifestyle and the traits and the qualities of what a champion is all about, which is what I'm going to give to you today. And that's the, that's the beauty of this. You don't have to worry about becoming. You are now. You act that way with those qualities and with those habits. Highly successful athlete habits. Number two, the other thing about champions is they're willing to do all that it takes to get it done. Not only that, but they're willing to do what other people don't want to do. The also rans, the almost champions, they do anything that others don't want to do. And they might not want to do it, but they do it anyway. For example, Michael Jordan, MJ, shows up to practice every day, an hour before practice, by himself, having people shag balls and taking shots over and over and over again. Lance Armstrong getting up in, the, in a cold of, the, of a morning in, in France to get on his bike when other athletes like him are sleeping. Tiger Woods right over here across the bay in Monterey. I saw him one time at, at the finishing of a, uh, a round of golf practicing for two hours on the putting green just so he can get a little bit better. I can remember in my training days, and they weren't too far away from where I am right now, I can remember going out in Colorado when I lived there, freezing temperatures in 7, 8 o'clock at night, 10 degrees going out to run, because I knew nobody else was doing it, and it gave me confidence. Now, the third thing about champions that I notice is this. They work, they play, and they compete with heart. Now let me explain what I mean by that. Most athletes who are out there playing the game, they see the athletic event as a battlefield against an opponent, against the score, against the clock, whatever it happens to be. What the champion does is they see that. They, they understand the battlefield, for sure. But what takes them out to playing with their heart is that they understand it's an arena for the battles within. And by the battles within, I'm talking about things like fear, frustration, failure, self-doubt. And you know what they do? They fight these battles, and they fight them with what I call the weapons of the heart. Weapons of the heart could be something like integrity. They say one thing, and they do it. They have a lot of integrity. They have a lot of courage. Courage comes from that French word, cour, which means heart, which is a wonderful word. They have courage to take risks and get it done. They have compassion for themselves. If they lose or they, they, they make a mistake, they don't get down and beat up on themselves. They have patience and perseverance. They sacrifice. They're, not, they're willing to suffer. They're willing to do what it takes. They're fearless. They're tenacious. They're audacious, very bold. These are the kind of qualities that the champion has. I can think of an athlete right now as I'm talking with you. This young man was at a, at a university, and he was told by the head coach, you'll never make it. You can run with us. You can join the team, but you're not going to be in the starting lineup. You're not going to make it. And he was determined. He was a champion. And let me tell you why. The reason why they told him he couldn't do it, they made all these measurements. They measured his body fat. They measured his oxygen uptake, his VO2 max. He's a runner, a distance runner. They measured his uh, slow twitch, fast twitch, muscle fibers, and all of that measurement, and they said, you can't do it. But there's one thing they forgot to measure. They forgot to measure his heart. By the time he finished school, he became the fifth American only to break four minutes in the mile. Now, I know what you're thinking. Let me try to read your mind, okay? You're sitting there saying, hmm, Jerry? This is great stuff. I love it already. I love my athletes. I want them to play with heart. But I only have a couple of athletes like that. You know, the other 37 athletes, they'll never play with heart. They don't have heart. So what do I do about that? I got great news for you. Playing, competing, and working with heart is something that can be taught. And if it can be taught, as we know, it can be learned.